Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience, worship in the word. And certainly we thank God for you sharing your time with us on today. We do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide. He who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. And to each of you in your respective places, we greet you with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. Well, this morning, we'd like to call your attention to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians, that's New Testament chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. You will find these words if you're there or when you get there. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this, your vessel, that I may preach and teach with power and with clarity. Anoint each of us, anoint our hearts, minds, and our spirits. We pray, God, that this word today, that we will believe it, receive it, explore it, apply it, and share it. Thank you for allowing us this privilege and this opportunity. This is our prayer. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Well, today we're going to talk about a change, change. And uh, our topic really is going to be two parts to being changed. Yes, two parts to being changed. As we observe uh, this month as Black History Month, we must remember, allow our minds to go back down memory lane to realize that there were several changes that, uh, that happened in um, our nation, in our communities, in our cities, counties, so that we could be where we are today. That's what history says, that there had to be some changes and there were some changes. However, today we're not going to focus on the changes that you know, we experience as Americans. We're going to talk about being changed in the eyesight of God. And there are two parts of being changed. Uh, the old folks used to say it's a bad wind that never changes. I remember several years ago, uh, when the first black president was running for the presidency and um, his theme was change that you can believe in. My brothers and my sisters, uh, change, you can guarantee that change will always be changing. So to be changed involves spiritual growth and the spiritual growth is a process. Being changed doesn't happen overnight. It is a, it is a process. It's really, it is really a partnership. So in Paul's letter to the Philippians in our text, he says first, work out your salvation. And then he says, it is God who works in you. Work out, we do that. Work in, God does that. Are you with me? 
Now, that sounds like a contradiction, but it is not. It is a paradox, a statement that seems contrary or contrary to common sense, yet it is perhaps true. Are you hearing me? The key to understanding the paradox is the word out. The key to understanding this particular paradox is the word out in verse 12. You are in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Notice now that Paul doesn't say work for your salvation. My brothers and sisters, there is a huge difference. Uh huh. To work for something means to earn it, to deserve it, to merit it. The Bible clearly teaches us that salvation is not something you have to work for. The Bible teaches us that salvation is a free gift from God's grace. Uh huh. So Paul says in the text, work out your salvation. Paul is literally talking about a spiritual workout. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. Yeah, he's talking about a spiritual workout. When you work out in the physical, what happens? Well, you develop a tone muscles mm -hmm, that God has given you or you were, you were born with. Uh-huh. Yeah. The workout means to cultivate, mm -hmm. to make the most of what you have been given. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. To work out means to cultivate. I'm saying that again because I want to drive that home. To work out means to cultivate, to make the best, uh-huh, the most of what you have been given. So Paul is saying in the text, hear me well, <clears throat> cultivate your spiritual life, develop, work out your spiritual life. You see, God has a part in our spiritual growth. I know some of you think that you can spiritually succeed or spiritually grow without God, but God has a part to play in our spiritual growth. And we also have a part to play. Now, that part, is what many times we don't understand because we want God to do all of it. But remember, we work out, God works in. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. He provides, God provides the power. But we, watch this, we must flip the switch to turn the power on. My brothers and my sisters, work out your salvation, for it is God who works in you. Work out, God works in. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Let's notice God's part in the process of being changed. Well, God's part is, first of all, this is my first point today, is that God uses his scriptures. God uses his word. My brothers and my sisters, in changing us, God uses the Bible to teach us how to live. Now, I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 15. Probably familiar to most of us, but I want you to see it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And listen to what Paul says, 15 through 17, actually. This is what Paul says to the church, <clears throat> or Paul says to his spiritual son, Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 15, he says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, the word of God, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God 
may be perfect or mature or complete, truly furnished into all good works. You see that? Wow. My brothers and sisters, if you are serious about changing your life for the better, you are going to have to get into the word of God. You're going to have to get into the Bible. Stop allowing it to collect dust and start reading it and studying it. You need to read it. You need to study it. You need to memorize it. You need to meditate on the word of God. And then you need to apply it to your lives. You know, many of us, we know the word and perhaps we even use it casually, but we don't really apply it to our lives. We we may say it, but we don't really believe what we say. We just say it to sound sanctimonious. If you expect your faith to grow, what is faith? Faith is belief or conviction plus corresponding action. Uh -huh. Yes, I know faith also is the substance of things, hope for and evidence of things not seen. You've got to allow your faith to grow or expect your faith to grow. You've got to get into the word. So God's part in being changed is you must use his scripture or his word. The second thing, God, the second thing of God's part in changing is God uses his spirit. Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, hear me well. When we commit our lives to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to empower and direct us. Uh -huh. I believe I can get a witness here. We turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Listen what Paul says as he writes to the church at Rome. He says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Did you see that? Uh-huh. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, watch this, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit and dwell in you. Wow, that's, that's shouting music right there. Listen, the spirit of God gives us new strength and vitality and, 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 and the, it gives us the, the, the desire and power to do what is right. You find folk or even Christian folk who's always doing wrong, you can rest assured that the spirit of God is not controlling them, and perhaps not even in them. Mm -hmm. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, as the Spirit of God works within, we become more and more like Him. Are you with me? Listen, God's number one purpose in your life is to make you more like Christ. You see, the Spirit of God uses the Word of God to make the child of God more like the Son of God. Now, if you missed that, I'm going to rewind the tape on that one, all right? Listen, <clears throat> the number one purpose in your life is God's number one purpose in your life is to make you more like Christ. The spirit of God uses the word of God to make the child of God more like the son of God. 
And what is Jesus Christ like? Good question, glad to ask. Well, his life on earth embodied the nine characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, and self-control. Mm -hmm. So, so God's part in changing our lives is, first of all, he uses his scripture. Secondly, God uses his spirit. The third thing God uses to change our lives is God uses situations. Are you hearing me? My brothers and my sisters, I believe God's initial idea was to have us read the scriptures to find out how we should live and depend on his indwelling spirit to enable us to do it. However, most of all, most of us are stubborn uh -huh, and we don't change that easy. Change, most of the time, is hard to do because most of the time, especially when it comes down to spirituality, people don't want to change. But remember I said early uh, that change will always be changing. So, so you, the life changes. We change um, how we wear our hair. We change our clothes. We change our homes. We change uh, jobs. We change all the physical and tangible things in our lives. But when it comes down to spirit, then we want to remain the same and not change. So, yes, God uses his scripture. Yes, God uses the spirit, but even those of us who profess and proclaim to believe in God, we are stubborn. Most Christians, yes, I said that. Most Christians are stubborn uh -huh, and we don't want to change. How would you heard it even in church? We said, well, God spoke. The leader said, God spoke to me and we're going to do this. And the first thing we said, well, I ain't never seen that done before. Well, you've never seen this day before. But the days change. So, so God brings in, because we don't change uh, initially most of the time, and because we are stubborn, what does God do? What does God do? Well, God brings in a third tool to work on us. And that tool of those tools are situations. Uh-huh. Listen. Problems, pain, pressure, difficulties, and depression always get our attention. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. the, interesting, the interesting thing about how God uses situations is that the source of the situation makes no difference to God. Did you hear that? I'm going to let you think about that for a moment. Oftentimes, we bring problems on ourselves by faulty decisions, bad judgments, and sins. At other times, problems are caused by other people. Sometimes the devil causes things to happen to us. But watch this. But God says the source of the situation or condition is irrelevant. I will use, I will still use it in your life. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the, the, the source. God will still use it in your life to get you to change for the better. Are you with me there? God is saying, I believe I will fit it into my plan for your life to make you like Christ. 
It doesn't matter the source. God will use it. God will allow some things to happen. He'll allow some people. He'll allow the devil to do some things into your life so he can, he can make you or fit you into his plan for your life so you can be more like Christ. So, hear this. There is no situation or there is no circumstance in life from which we cannot learn if, if we just have the right attitude. Are you hearing me? My brothers and sisters, hear me well. Sometimes it takes a painful, a painful experience to make us change our ways. Remember I said a few minutes ago, the old folks used to say, and it's true, it's a bad wind that never changes. Mm -hmm. We are not as likely to change when we see the light as when we feel the heat. I say that again. We're not likely, likely to change when we see the light as when we feel the heat. Why? Why is that? Why we got to feel the heat to change and why we could have changed by just seeing the light? Because, here's the answer, because we change only when the fear of change is exceeded by our pain. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, the first step in change is usually discomfort. It doesn't feel good. We can't figure it out. So God uses every situation in our lives for our growth. Yes. So he uses scripture. He uses the word. He uses the spirit. His spirit. But he also uses situations. That's God part in being changed. Now, remember, our subject today is two parts of being changed. Now, what is our part? Well, here it is. Our part is we must decide or choose our thoughts. That's where it begins. We must decide or choose our thoughts. You see, my brothers and sisters, spiritual growth is not automatic. Spiritual growth is not automatic. Change is a matter of decision. We can't just passively sit around doing nothing and expect to grow. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. We can't sit around and do nothing and expect to grow. We must make decisions if we really want to change. Now, if you want to continue to do what you're doing and don't grow and don't get more spiritual, don't get closer to God, then, then that's what you do. Just sit around, don't eat, do anything, don't read your Bible, don't study your Bible, don't have communication with God, don't do what God says, don't work, don't witness. Don't worship. There's no word. Sit around and do nothing. You see, you must be careful how you think. How you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Did you get that? Mm-hmm. Someone said, you are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. If you are going to change, and many of us 
have room to change for the better. If you and I are going to change our life, you know, there are a lot of people trying to change other folk lives. But if you're going to change your life, you have to change your thought patterns. Mm -hmm. You see, my brothers and my sisters, change always began with new thinking. And change begins, watch this, change begins with you. If you keep doing the same thing and expecting something different, there's a word they call you for being that or doing that. Insanity. Keep doing the same thing and expecting something different. That's insanity. You want to change, you got to change your thoughts. So, remember, what we must do, our part is we must decide or choose our thoughts. Romans chapter 2 verse, chapter 12, excuse me, verse 2 says, we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, not by willpower, but by renewing our minds or renewing our thinking. Listen, the way we think, my brothers and sisters, determines the way we feel. And the way we feel determines the way we act. You see people acting foolish all the time. That's because they, their thoughts have been foolish. So, here it is. If you want to change your actions, you have to go back to the source and change the way you think because actions began with a thought. Stop thinking the thoughts that are getting you in trouble and start thinking thoughts that will get you where you want to go and where you need to go in God. Hmm. St. John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Mm -hmm. My brothers and my sisters, when you base your life on the truth, what is the truth? The word of God, whatever God says, that's the truth. When you base your life on the truth, when you live with the right kind of thoughts, not misconceptions or false beliefs, right thoughts out of God's word, you will be made free. Free from being incarcerated by worldly ways. Free from being in bondage to sin and selfishness. Free to do the things that God has called, chosen, and commissioned for us to do. Yes, hear me well. You will be made free if you think on God's word and act on God's word. You will be made free. You will find your old habits your old feelings, your old actions falling away. When those actions and feelings and thoughts and habits was not like God, when you began to utilize God's word in your life and begin to think on his word, then those bad thoughts, bad feelings, bad habits and actions will fall away. You see, God gives us his word. And many of us, we don't like the word of God. We like a whole bunch of noise. We don't want the word. We don't want to know what the word, word say. We, if we do, we want to hear what the word says that makes us feel good. We don't want to hear what the word says that convict us or, or chastises us. But you see, God gives us his word. 
but we have to use his word. Mm -hmm. We have to practice biblical meditation. One more last scripture I want you to turn to is song number one. The first song. You've heard it before, I'm sure, if you've been in church a few years. But I want you to see it. Song number one, verse one. Listen to what it says. Blessed is the man, not talking about gender. Blessed is the human being that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. You see, many of us and most of us, especially in Christendom, we want, we want the blessings of God. We want to be blessed, but we perhaps don't want to do what God says, or what God requires of us to be blessed. But listen. The blessed man or the blessed person, blessed man, woman, boy, or girl, delight in the law of the Lord, which is the word of God. And on his law, on his word, the blessed man meditates day and night. What happens when we do that? Well, here it is. As a result, the blessed person is a tree. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Uh -huh. His leaves also shall not wither. That's what Psalms goes on to say in Psalm number one. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he shall do it shall, that means it's going to happen, shall prosper. So God says that when we meditate on his word, day and night, we will be fruitful, productive people. People full of love, joy, peace, patience, and the rest of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. It all exudes from love. So my brothers and my sisters, if you want to be, if you want to be changed or you want to change your life for the better, there are two parts of being changed. And God has a part. Paul says God works in, but you also have a part. part. Paul says you work out your salvation. That means that God doesn't do it all. You have to do something if you want to be changed. There are many people who should change, but they don't have a desire to change. In the business world, they say if you want to prosper, succeed in the business world, you must remember that change begins with you. And not only in the business world, but in the world generally, if there's going to be change, it begins with you. We spend all of our times and we stay up late at night how to figure out how to change somebody else. Guess what? It won't work. Change begins with you. But guess what? You can, can't really change yourself. That's why Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, that we work out and God works in. There are two parts to being changed. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for allowing us this privilege and this opportunity to come together on today. We thank you for your holy and divine word. And we pray, God, that this word today will sink deeply 
into our hearts, minds, and our spirits that will make us better, better Christians, better disciples, and better ambassadors of yours. As we carry out the assignment that you have given us individually and collectively, we pray now, God, for the church, the call-out ones, the ecclesia, the body of Christ. We pray for strength. We pray for healing. We pray for peace in the midst of confusion. We pray, God, that we remember what you have done for us and remember what you have called us to do. We pray for those who may have been a part of the body of Christ will have backslidden. We pray that they would make a decision on today to come back to a God who loves them in spite of them. We pray for those who may be watching or listening who never experienced the gift of salvation, never received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. I want to take a moment today to pray for you because that is your first step and obtaining the blessings from God. Yes, you are his creation, but you are not his child until you receive what God did through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He who believe in the Son of God became the children of God. He, do, he who believe in the Son of God becomes also the children of God. So if you're listening and you're not saved, I would ask if you just pray uh, this prayer with me on today. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and he died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption that I might be redeemed. And I ask that you come into my heart and make me a new creature, a new creation. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Listen, if you prayed that prayer on today, according to the word of God, you are saved. But I want to encourage you now to make sure that you connect with a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, so you can learn and grow on what you have just believed or confessed. I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about joining a band of baptized believers in Christ Jesus. Find someone where, who you can, uh, you can have, uh, you will have faith in that will lead you to the next steps in your spiritual walk. And if you need our church, please call us. With the Innovation Baptist Church, you can call us at 850-575-0818. Or you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and someone will help you along the way. And if you're backslidden, again, I want to encourage you, come back to God. He loves you in spite of you. It doesn't matter how far you have fallen, how, how far you have strayed away. The Bible teaches us that God is married to the backslider. So he's waiting and willing for you to come back and he'll restore you. He is a restoration God. Hallelujah. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us on today. We do invite you back on Wednesday, Wednesday night at 6.30 for our Wednesday night uh, word explosion, gospel explosion, pastoral teachings on Wednesday night at 6.30. We pray that uh, if you need this message, you can log on to our website and you can get the replay and even share it with someone else that you think may need this word. So until Wednesday, stay safe, stay strong, and be blessed certainly is my prayer.